Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range and I've got a selection of guns out here to talk specifically about a uh, nasty safety design flaw in the FN 1910, this little pocket pistol here, uh, known best for the use by a certain Gavrilo Princip to assassinate a certain Archduke in 1914. Now, back in the day when I was doing TFB TV, I did a video on the FN 1910 and a gentleman contacted me uh, by email with a story about how he used to carry one of these. And he had this really, really clever way of plus one-ing it, um, as in having a full magazine plus one in the chamber. And I was actually kind of shocked because he had managed to find a way to operate this pistol to put it in a completely useless and utterly unsafe condition. More on that in a bit. But sort of just generally philosophically, these days people are so liability conscious that they try and design out this sort of thing from, uh, from pistols. If we take the classic example of the Glock 17, literally the only conditions you can have it in are empty striker cocked, empty striker down, obviously with or without magazine in it. If we cock it, it's cocked striker up. There's no funny business. We can't do anything strange. That will still go bang if it's pulled. And the only design flaw in this safety wise is the fact that you have to pull the trigger to take the slide off. And some countries have insisted that their versions of the Glock have that engineered out. And um, this is a particularity with the 1910, which is striker fired. Um, you hear a lot of stories of people carrying particularly 1911s, single action handguns with the hammer down. And a friend of mine was with the Danes in Denmark and his young lieutenant of his platoon insisted that it wasn't safe to carry it with it on the safety and it was safer to carry it hammered down like that. And to cut a long story short, apparently this guy hit that on something and got around in his leg because this is not a safe situation to carry it. Even on the half cock, if you were to give that a good enough hit, that will break through and strike. Now, these do have rebounding strikers. That is to say, the striker is actually not long enough such that, I mean, if we just look in there, try and get the light in there. And if I push this as far as the hammer can push it in the rest state, it's kind of flush. What this requires is a, is a, is a good whack and it's inertia carries it forward. And a good example of this is the 6LP226, where if I push, focus, if I push the firing pin as far as, as far as the hammer can push it, it doesn't get anywhere near, it doesn't get anywhere near, look at that. And what that relies on is that it's a, it's a heavy striker, it's got loads of inertia and it over travels. It gets whacked by the hammer here. It's inertia over travels and it's, it's that. It, it, when, you, when you fire it, it goes dink. And this is made double secure by having a rebounding hammer. As you'll see, the hammer over travels. The rest position of the hammer is here. But when you fire it, single action or double action, it, go, it goes further it hits that rebounding striker. That rebounding striker rebounds and the hammer rebounds too. And there's a little safety in there such that if the trigger isn't pulled, that can't go forward. Another example of that is a Makarov. This is a kind of interesting one because there's no rebounding striker. And in fact, the striker on this, you see it's not even protruding here because it will always protrude from the slide. Get the light in there, you can just see it. It's always protruding. And this uses a rebounding hammer. As you can see, bash. So the, um, it's very odd. Uh, it kind of serves as a loaded chamber indicator because that only protrudes, the, the back end of the striker only protrudes when there's a cartridge in the chamber. That's a bit of an odd setup with the, uh, uh, with the striker, but it is absolutely impossible because of this rebounding hammer to end up in a situation where you've got uh, the hammer in contact with the striker. And because that's already in contact, inertia's got no run up, there's, uh, there's no, nowhere for it to go. Another single action example, Browning Hypat, again, 
rebounding striker, but not very far. Again, not very safe to carry this in, uh, in a hammer down condition. I mean, these things are designed to be carried in cocked and locked or magazine place and no, uh, where is it? Got the spring on this one. Just push it. Difficult with the angle on camera. I've got, I need three hands with this. Don't know if you can see that, there we go. But the, again, it's only just off. I wouldn't want to trust, I wouldn't want to trust anything to that, whether down or half cocked. And in any case, yeah, cocked and locked is perfectly safe. That is the safest way to carry it without the chamber empty. And I'm not going to go into thoughts on um, Israeli carry or anything like that. So another example of similar era to this, we have an FN 1903. This looks like a striker fired pistol, but it's not. It's actually hammer fired. And uh, the hammer is cocked fairly early in the, in, in the cocking cycle. So it's either, it's either empty or it's properly cocked. I mean, if I can feel it on the trigger here, it's already cocked there. You can't, you can't hook it, you can't do anything strange. It cocks early enough in the cycle. Just completeness, I've got a brand new double action. Um, again, similar concerns, you could deliberately try and do something silly with it, like that, but you've got a big decocking lever, why would you? Um, again, similar arrangement to the, to, the, to the high power, it is basically a double action high power. And this drops it onto the half cock in any case. And plus, there's a firing pin block here. So even if that is down like that, you see when I release the trigger, it drops. That striker is then blocked from going forward. Uh, that, of course, adds grit and grunge to the trigger pull. But this is totally safe with the hammer down, as you'd expect from a double action pistol. So... So, 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 to go back to this. Now, if you use it as the manufacturer intended, it is perfectly safe. So the way the manufacturer intends you to use it is to load the magazine, and I only have one dummy, so I'm only gonna use the one. Put the magazine in, cock it, put it on safe. And then you've got that safety catch and you've got the grip safety that is then not going anywhere. The whole idea of this, they're they're, they were desperately trying to, uh, uh, to be as safe as possible when it's used correctly. So even if the safety catches off, you've got this god awful grip safety that needs to be squeezed really hard. Otherwise it can't go off. So the logical way to plus one this, if you were so inclined, would be to place the magazine, cock it, safe it, take the magazine off, top it off, put it back in, job jobbed, perfectly normal. Now what this gentleman wrote to me in an email that he did was, he, he checked it was clear, and then he fired off the action. He then very carefully hooked it into the stripping position. And uh, here in these pistols, the ejector is the firing pin. It's a very long firing pin that protrudes. And I'll show you that in more detail when I take it apart. Now, he said that he next put a loose round in the chamber. You can't actually get it through the ejection window, so I guess he did something like that. Dropped the slide, and then put in a full magazine. And then saved. Now, the problem with this is several fold. First of all, he's got the striker touching the primer with the full force of the, uh, of the spring behind it. And actually, the striker is down, it is uncocked. So he was carrying around a gun in a condition where if he dropped it, if it got a good bash, there was a chance that it would have gone, gone bang. But if he'd ever needed it, if he'd pulled it out and flipped off the safety, trigger's dead because it's not cocked. Because this system, and it's this system, let's see if you can hear it. There. The striker is cocked at that position, so beyond the point 
he was pulling it to. This was clever, very clever, and obviously not something that the designers would have thought anyone would have tried to do. But I guess these days people really think of how can we abuse these, uh, these pistols to do things we don't want to do with them. So let's take this apart now and see what's going on inside. Now, uh, first of all, we're gonna obviously check it's clear, which it is. We're going to push in on that bushing and turn it and the spring is quite chunky. Out it comes, but now the tension's off. So we can then bring it back onto the stripping catch. We can rotate the barrel, take that off, and then this will come off forwards. Now, if it's cocked when you, uh, when you take it apart, the striker will be held on the sear there. So then we can rotate that and we get the barrel out. And what we're really interested in is the striker system. So this has a particularly long striker and these are not particularly dry fire safe because of this being very, very long and it whacking that. Apparently they do have a tendency to break. That goes in that slot there. You've got a spring, you've got a little spring guide on the back. And as you can see there, it's protruding quite significantly because that is the ejector. So uh, as, as the slide comes back, it's the force on the striker spring, which gives the ejection force and pings it out. You've got the extractor in there. There's no blade, there's no fixed ejector. It is literally the striker, which is the ejector. And then on the frame, and we need to put the magazine in, squeeze the grip safety, you've got the sear going there, you've got the trigger linkage there. Sear goes down, very, 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 very simple. And it's got a tripping lever from the, uh, from the slide, which breaks the disconnector, pops the sear up to catch the next, to catch the, uh, the striker as the slide comes back again. And then that little buttress there holds the back end of, of the spring guide. So I've just managed to get it so that you can see the, uh, the bent and the sear. There's not actually that much engagement there, but there's like three different safety mechanisms that all have to be disengaged and the trigger has to be pulled in order for that to pop off. But ee. So just for completeness, the three integral safeties are the magazine safety, which is there, that needs to be depressed. It's big mechanical AND gate. This safety here, you just see under there, blocks the sear from moving. And then this, again, there's a tail on the sear there and that blocks it from moving. So we need the magazine in, we need this safety disengaged and we need that pushed in, in order to drop the sear. So to put this back together, let's put the barrel in first with the lugs at the bottom of the slide turn them up into the notch, the lugs engage with that there. We need to not forget the striker and spring and follower. We then take the magazine off. We make sure that it's all lined up there. And pull it back onto the stripping position. We can then rotate the barrel down and in. And then we, this is a bit of a pain. This needs quite a lot, quite a lot of force. Ah, luckily you can turn it one way or the other and it's engaged when the two notches are up and down. And then we can function check it. And there you have it. There now follows a brief public service announcement. If you're watching this video on YouTube, wouldn't it be great if there was somewhere on the internet regrouping the best gun nerd content in one place, free of demonetizations and insta bans, and enabling you to watch it either on desktop or on most major platforms including Apple, Android, Roku and Amazon Fire? Well, now there is. Go to weaponsandwall.tv and sign up for $9.99 a month or $99 a year to enjoy and support the work of all these great channels in one convenient package with cross-channel collections, feature weeks and other cool features you won't find elsewhere, and better video quality. There may even be a discount code for the monthly subscription active right now. 
check the main page of weaponsandwar.tv to find out. If that's not for you, the traditional options of Patreon and Player are of course still open, links in the description, and we're always grateful for a like, a subscribe and a salty comment to feed the algorithm. Many thanks for your support in whatever form it may be. Now, back of the plot. So I hope that was at least vaguely interesting, and I think you'll agree it's a long way, safety-wise, from this, which requires you not trying to be a more special idiot, to this, where the only problem is uh, pulling the trigger when stripping it if you haven't cleared the pistol first. Um, there's a huge gulf in thinking in terms of making designs inherently safe where there is no unsafe condition. There is no condition where uh, it won't go bang if you, if you, if you need it to but you think it, uh, but you think it should, um, or that, uh, that you can have the striker down on a, um, on, a, on a life primer in a way that could be a problem if the gun gets a good knock. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that was at least vaguely interesting. Um, please consider liking and subscribing and supporting us on the app, Patreon or Player, and uh, see you again sometime. Bye.